there are some insane rules in the NFL. Like, did you know that refs can just give out free points? Or that it's illegal to use the word Super Bowl and that players can pull each other's hair out? Grab it by the hair, which you can do. Yes, you can. These are 15 NFL rules you didn't know exist. And first, what if I told you the NFL has a rule that's gonna get players killed? This is Hollis Thomas, a defensive tackle who played in the NFL. And the man's a tank. He had muscle, size, but the one thing that could hold him back was his asthma. Yeah, Hollis needed an inhaler while he was playing in the NFL, or else he might literally lose his breath and die on the field. But he didn't realize a chemical found in most inhalers made him test positive for steroids, which are strictly banned in the NFL. And you'd think the NFL would make an exception, considering the guy is just trying to breathe. But no, the NFL punished Thomas, suspending him without pay for four games, all for using his inhaler. That is crazy, but not as crazy as these two players, who made it illegal to fart. Yeah. See, in 2016, the Denver Broncos practice was getting fart bombed by their two star players, Von Miller and Demarcus Ware, who were letting it rip left and right. So the Broncos decided to come up with a brand new team rule to eliminate the stink the fart tax, which means that every time a player farts, their ass is getting fined. We came up with it in the defensive meeting room. It's a small room filled with like 12 guys. Exactly. <laughs> if everybody in there farting, it'd, it'd get out of control. So we came up with the fart tax. Now, you probably didn't know that in the NFL, it's required to give referees Super Bowl rings. Yeah, most leagues got no love for the refs, but it's different with football. These guys put their bodies on the line to make sure the game is played fair, so they get respect. And as an NFL referee, making it to the Super Bowl is tough, cause they not only had to have ref for at least five seasons, but they also needed to get a good grade on their referee report card. Yeah, that's a real thing. So no matter who wins, the refs automatically get a Super Bowl ring, but they probably aren't even allowed to wear it, cause the NFL has the strictest dress code in all of sports. See, first off, technically, football players aren't even allowed to show their legs, all cause in 1945, an old NFL commissioner thought that players had quote, unsightly legs. So he made a rule that literally required all of them to cover their legs up with long socks. And that's still in the rule book. And nowadays, the NFL is the literal fashion police, cause they crack down on everything. Like Deion Sanders, for example. In the 90s, he tried to make bandanas popular, only to get them banned by the league. All because the owners thought they made players look unprofessional. And uh, let's say you want to wear paint on your face, that just so happens to support your favorite charity. Well, your ass is getting fucked if the NFL sees it, because they only allow players to wear official sponsors of the NFL, no exceptions. And D'Angelo Williams learned that in 2015, when he wore eye paint that said, find the cure, in order to support his mom, who had died from cancer. But after five years of wearing this, the NFL finally caught on and fined him $6,000 for it. Jesus, that hurts my soul. But uh... This next rule will make your head hurt, cause in the NFL, it's perfectly legal to rip a man's hair out. In 2003, Ricky Williams had the craziest head in the game, and every time he got the ball, his dreadlocks looked majestic as hell. He'd be sprinting toward the end zone, with his dreads hanging out the back of his helmet, flowing for the world to see. But unfortunately for Ricky, it all quickly turned into a bad hair day, cause other players realized that his hair was so long, they could tackle him by grabbing his dreads. Yeah, and it got so bad, this poor guy got his hair pulled from behind twice in one game. But it had everyone wondering, is that even allowed? Well, the NFL announced shortly after that it is legal, saying that hair is a part of a player's uniform. And to make matters even worse, they went on to name it the Ricky Rule. But by the next year, Ricky was sick of being disrespected. So he decided to shave his head so no one could grab a damn thing. Yeah, well, that rule ain't fair. And neither was this next one. Cause the league banned celebrations, and it ruined their reputation. See, in the 2000s, players had all types of crazy fun celebrations. Terrell Owens would chug popcorn, steal pom-poms from the cheerleaders, and even autograph footballs with a sharpie. And Chad Johnson, he once capped off a touchdown catch by proposing to a cheerleader. And she might have said yes, but the NFL said no. Cause it turns out, they didn't like any of these celebrations, no matter how fun they were. All because a bunch of uptight owners thought they were immature 
immature and made the game look like a joke. So in 2006, the NFL made an update to their rule book that changed everything. They decided to put a ban on excessive celebrations, meaning that anything outside of a ball spike or a quick dance will get you a 15-yard penalty and tens of thousands in fines. But the biggest punishment of all was for the NFL, because this rule earned them the nickname the No Fun League. Players, fans, the media, even coaches were calling the NFL lame as hell for not allowing fun celebrations. So after years of getting their name dragged, the league realized that they didn't like the bad rap. That's why in 2017, they reversed their decision and eased up on the celebration rules. Man, thank God. How else am I gonna watch grown men play Duck Duck Goose? But hopefully no one gets hurt, cause in the NFL, being injured is against the rules. See, every team only has three timeouts a half, and they can go quick. So in the heat of the moment, players gotta get a little creative in order to catch their breath. That's why sometimes, they resort to one of the sneakiest tricks in the book, dropping to the field and pretending that they're hurt. Yeah, guys are faking injuries, cause if someone is hurt, they have to stop the game. And over the years, tons of players have been caught manipulating this rule. Emmanuel Sanders, Jesse Bates, dudes have been flopping like fish and getting caught red-handed. But in 2022, Saints defensive lineman Cam Jordan allegedly faked an injury and was fined 50 grand by the NFL. They thought the guy was trying to pull a fast one, but after getting an MRI, Cam revealed that he'd actually sprained his left foot. He wasn't faking anything, so ultimately, he filed an appeal against the league, and the NFL was left with no choice but to take back their punishment. Yeah, the NFL's got a little too much power. But so do the players, cause I bet you didn't know the NFL has an unwritten rule that is getting out of hand. See, football is hard enough on the field, but if you're a rookie, life off the field is an absolute nightmare. Cause going into a player's first season, it's a league-wide tradition to get hazed by the vets. From giving them the most hideous haircuts, to emptying their wallets, making them pay $30,000 dinners, and even strapping them down to the goalpost and waterboarding them. And it's an unwritten rule. The rookies can't say no to any of it. They just gotta sit there and take it. But it could be worse. Cause you definitely didn't know that the NFL has a rule so powerful, it's never been used. I'm talking about rule number 17, section 2, article 3, the unfair act rule, which states that if a team commits an intentionally dangerous act that affects the outcome of a game, it's considered unfair. And in that case, the commissioner would have full power to overturn the results. So for example, in 2019, during the NFC Championship, Rams cornerback Nikel Roby Coleman delivered a vicious hit, nailing a Saints player right in the helmet on what people were calling a dirty play. Two officials talk to each other. Crowd's going crazy as there's no flag right on the Saints sideline. Yeah, the hit hurt. But what happened next hurt even worse, cause the refs refused to call a penalty on the field, and the Saints went on to lose the game, leaving fans so pissed that they immediately whipped out the rule book and pointed to Rule 17, demanding the commissioner to enforce it and replay the game on account of this hit being unfair and illegal. But the NFL was having none of that, cause the fact is, even if they thought the hit was dirty, canceling even one football game would be a financial nightmare. People spend millions of dollars to watch games every week. So completely throwing out the result and starting over would be a major L. And what about all the money people spend betting on games? How do you possibly give out that many refunds? Well, the NFL doesn't know either. That's why in the end, the Saints had to keep the loss that night. And to this day, no commissioner in league history has ever enforced Rule 17. But look, we still got more rules to talk about. Like, did you know that players could be fined millions for not talking to reporters? Or that the league had to ban this? Cause some of the greatest players were using it to cheat. Yeah, we'll get to all those and much more coming up after a word from our sponsor, Morgan & Morgan. See, when you're as good as I am, you become a target on the field. And after we scored our 69th point of the game, this dude that was guarding me got mad, blindsided me, and broke my leg. And I didn't know what to do. I couldn't afford the cost of fixing my broken leg. But after doing some digging, I found something that saved my life. An injury law firm that'll fight your case for completely free, unless you win. Yeah, Morgan & Morgan will fight to give you the best results. So if you ever have an injury, you can go to ForThePeople.com and sign up for a free case evaluation to get started. Trust me, dog, you won't regret it. But look, some rules are meant to be broken, because you probably had no idea that some of the greatest players in NFL history were cheaters. Yeah, 
In the 70s, cornerback Lester Hayes was looking for a surefire way to never drop the ball, so he started rubbing himself up with stickle, a sticky substance that basically turned his hands to glue. And we're not talking about a little dollop of glue either. Lester was completely coating his hands and arms with this stuff, making it obvious to everyone. It worked though. In 1980, Lester grabbed a league record 13 interceptions and was earning himself a reputation for having the stickiest fingers in the NFL. But a year later, the rulebook got updated and the league determined that Stickum gave players an unfair advantage and made footballs too easy to catch. So they officially banned it. Now look though, these are NFL players we're talking about. You think a damn rule is gonna stop them? Hell no. Nah. Just four years later, another NFL legend entered the league and started using Stick'em too, and he just so happened to be the greatest wide receiver of all time, Jerry Rice, who in 2015, after a Hall of Fame career, accidentally admitted to using Stick'em throughout his entire time in the NFL. Rice tweeted the following Saturday night. I apologize, people. After doing my research about Stick'em, the NFL banned this in 1981. All players did it. Did you add to your gloves the tackiness? No, I don't, I don't think so. Now, you, you're on record as saying you added a little tacky. Well, to because it. with the Newman gloves and stuff like that, they were not as tacky as the gloves today. So, did I put a little adhesive spray on those gloves at that time? Yeah, I, I did. Man, sometimes it's best to just keep your mouth shut. But other times, it's against the rules. Because NFL players can get fined millions for saying nothing at all. See, in 2013, Marshawn Lynch was fed up. He couldn't just go to work, play football, and go home and relax. No, every single week, he had to deal with an athlete's worst nightmare, the media. These guys think they can just grab a microphone and ask Marshawn dumb questions like this. Why do you have to be a jerk to all of us? Yeah, Marshawn don't got time for any of their nonsense. So in 2013, he refused to talk to anyone with a microphone. Every time he pulled up for an interview, he just kept his mouth shut. But there's one big problem with that. It's against the NFL's media policy, which requires players to be available to reporters throughout the week, even if they don't feel like talking. And the NFL wasn't letting Beast Mode slide, as they fined Marshawn 50000 for skipping a 2013 media session. Then in 2014, they fined him another 50 grand for not talking to reporters long enough. And by this point, the league thought that all that money would finally open Marshawn's mouth. So going into Super Bowl 48, they were expecting him to play nice with the media. But instead, he pulled up to Super Bowl row and trolled everyone. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined. I'm here so I won't get fined. I'm here so I won't get fined. I'm here so I won't get fined. I'm just here so I won't get fined. I'm just here so I won't get fined. Marshawn said the same thing. 29 times. But Marshawn probably should have opened his mouth sooner, cause over the course of his career, not talking to reporters cost him over 1.2 million. Man, I'll tell you what, if I lost 1.2 million for saying nothing, I'd have a whole lot to say. But players are losing more than just money, cause the NFL's got one rule that's ruining players' careers as we speak. In 2022, one of the league's most up-and-coming wide receivers made headlines. Calvin Ridley was caught gambling on football games. Yeah, that's a big no-no in the NFL, cause the league thinks it sends the wrong message to fans and to sports bettors, arguing that players betting on their own games is shady as hell. And what Calvin was doing didn't look good at all, cause when the news broke, it was revealed that during a mental health break the year before, he was sitting at home, betting on his own team to win, dropping $1,500 in total and officially violating the league's rule book. And with people calling the league's integrity into question, the NFL felt like they had no choice but to make an example out of Calvin. So they suspended him for the entire next season, costing the guy over 11 million in salary. But he's just one of many getting popped. Cause in the 2023 offseason, 10 players were busted by the league and suspended for a total of 137 games. All for betting on the NFL. Man, what happened to just betting on yourself? But anyways, I bet you didn't know that there's only two ways the NFL will ever cancel a game. See, with only 17 games in an entire season, every single game is important to a team. Just in ticket sales alone, teams make around $7 million a week. That's not including TV ads or sponsorships. So it's in each team's best interest to play every single game. That means playing in any weather condition. And I mean any. I mean in 2011, the Jaguars and Panthers literally played in a damn tsunami. While in 1985, the Bucks and Packers played in five inches of snow. On a night that wasn't fit for man or beast, 
the Broncos beat back the elements and beat up the Packers. Damn, they had them playing in a snow globe. But look, there's been a few times where the NFL has canceled games, like during the 9-11 attacks. The NFL rescheduled every game that week to the end of the season, and most recently in 2022, during a game between the Bills and Bengals, Bills safety DeMar Hamlin went in for a tackle, and when he got up, suddenly collapsed. The game was indefinitely paused as DeMar was taken out on a stretcher after suffering cardiac arrest. Thankfully though, DeMar made a full recovery and was cleared to return to playing football. But this ended up making history. It was the first time an NFL game was started and then canceled, never to be made up again. Damn, the NFL means serious business. And I mean serious business, because just saying the word Super Bowl is against the law. I'm not kidding. See, in 1969, the NFL officially trademarked the term Super Bowl, which means that any use of it outside the NFL is completely illegal. So when you see a Super Bowl commercial, they legally have to refer to it as the big game. And I know what you're thinking. Well, that's ridiculous. How could they enforce that? Well, it turns out the NFL does not play around, because in 2007, they went and tried to sue a church. Yeah, a church in Indianapolis was just trying to throw a Super Bowl party for their community, where people could purchase a ticket, go watch the big game, and get some food. Which sounds like any regular Super Bowl party. But the NFL got wind of their party, and immediately shut their ass down, sending an actual cease and desist letter to the church, saying it was not only illegal for them to charge people to attend, but they couldn't refer to it as a Super Bowl party either. Man, you gotta be careful what you're saying out there. But speaking of the Super Bowl, have you ever wondered how much the most expensive Super Bowl commercial cost? Or what the longest touchdown ever thrown was? How about the greatest comeback in NFL history? Well, those are just three of the unbreakable NFL records that I covered. So look, if you want to hear more, you need to click on this video right here. These are NFL records that'll never be broken. And uh, this video's over, so you might as well click it, right? What are you doing? Click it.